Today, I'm pleased to bring you the tutorial for my newest pattern design, the absolute definition of old Hollywood sophistication and class. This Marlin vest has a beautiful structure and such a flattering shape thanks to the graceful princess seams and all of the little design details like the elegant V neckline, faux weld pockets, and the prettiest D-ring closure at the back for that additional enhancing form makes this such an iconic piece to create. We're going to use our Marlene vest PDF sewing pattern, so to follow along, get yours at the link below in the description. Here are the materials that you'll need. And a quick note about the interfacing, I recommend choosing a lightweight interfacing. Here one side is smooth and the other side has tiny glue dots. This will give us the needed stabilization and form to our vest. For this vest, I went with this pretty light blue poplin fabric and I recommend using a light to medium weight fabric that holds its shape, won't stretch out, and won't be see-through as we want the option of wearing this vest on its own. Some good fabric choices would be linen, cotton, suiting fabric, crepe, gabardine, as well as the lightweight denim. So cut out your pattern pieces, making sure to mark all of your notches. And here they are, the center front, side front, the back, the back facing, front facing, back lining, the front lining, the back strap for the left side and the right side, the weld pocket, and the pocket back. I've already interfaced them, the front details, the facing details, and the back piece, which you actually have the option of interfacing on just the top section or the entire piece. And of course, the instructional booklet that comes with your pattern will guide you on all of this. Okay, subscribe and we'll get started. The first thing we're going to do is sew the center back seam. Pin the two back pieces right sides together, matching the marks at the center back, and sew. After that, press the center seam flat and then press it open. Use a wooden tailor's clapper to cool the fabric. And if you don't have one yet, I have one linked below for you. Mark the cut line on the back piece, taking the paper pattern and laying it on one half of the back. Take some chalk or a disappearing ink pen and mark the cut line for our dart. And so that we can transfer our dart, fold on the guideline of our paper pattern and make a small slit through the very point of the dart. Line it up with our fabric pattern and then place a pin at the point. You can do this process on the wrong side of the fabric and on the right side. So just to show you, I'll do this half on the wrong side. Like this, and now we're going to cut through the marked lines. Take the right and left strap details, fold it in half right sides together, each, and pin. Now draw a guideline for your seam. As our D-rings are 2 centimeters, or 3 quarters of an inch, according to the pattern, we are going to make that our seam allowances. I actually bought slightly smaller D-rings, so I'll make the seam allowances a bit bigger. Sew and turn them inside out, and press. Here are the two strap details, as you can either top stitch or turn them inside out, choose which method you personally prefer. Right where our marks are, place the straps to their matching sides, the longer strap to the right side. Remember that my straps are a little thinner than the pattern design, but now we can secure them. Just like this. Now secure the darts by matching up the cut edges, pinning all the way up to the dart point. Do the same to the other half, and if needed, draw a guideline with the seam allowances at the bottom, narrowing up to the dart point. Sew the darts, making the first three stitches right along the edge. Then clip towards the seam at the end of the cut edge. This is going to help us press this out smoothly. Press the legs of the dart seam open and press the rest of the dart towards the center seam. You can use a seam ripper to pull out the stay stitch so that the straps will face the opposite way here in the back to avoid any thickness. Then press it facing to the other side. Take your D-rings and pull the left short strap through and then fold the end of the strap about 1.5 to 2 centimeters or 3 quarters of an inch towards the back of the strap and pin, sewing it in place. After sewing, pull the long strap through the D-rings and later on we can adjust the fit of the vest using this beautiful fastening. Take the front and side front details and pin the princess seams matching the waist marks and the marks on the bust. 
There's gonna be ease at the bust curve, so pin carefully distributing it. Ease is needed to create a beautiful bust shape to the waistcoat. So the princess seam. And clip the princess seams with a 1.5 centimeter or half an inch distance starting from the underbust to the top. Press the princess seams open, carefully pressing with the natural shape of the seam. And press the bust area forming the shape using a tailor's ham. Trim the seam allowances to half starting from the top and ending at the underbust. So here's our pretty and neat princess seam. Moving on to our faux weld pockets that we're going to add to this vest, take the side front paper pattern piece and mark a cutout for the pocket following the guiding frame. You can simply make little punctures and mark through them at the corners, or you can also take some delicate scissors and cut out the frame guide so that you can lay it down on the fabric and trace it out like this. Repeat on the other half as well and connect using a ruler to get clean lines. The frame is 1.5 centimeters wide or a half an inch, so you want to keep a right angle with the frame, which is not necessarily easy even with the edge of the fabric, and do the same to the other side of the front. Take the weld details, number 10, and fold them in half wrong sides together and press. From the folded edge, mark the width of the pocket, which is 1.5 cm, or to be super precise in inches 5 and 8 of an inch, and draw a guideline. Stay stitch the guideline and press. Mark the pocket frame on the right side of the fabric, extending the marking lines at least 3 cm or an inch past the frame all around. Measure out the seam allowances on this weld piece, again around 1.5 cm, then measure the length of the pocket, mine is 11 cm, 4 and 3 eighths of an inch, so I'm going to mark this distance from the seam allowance on the weld at the stay stitch line. Flip the weld piece around so that the fold is facing down towards you, and we're going to match these marks up exactly with the frames. So place a pin at the corner of this mark and match it with the bottom corner of the frame. Repeat for the other side making sure it lays evenly. Now we're going to sew the weld straight from one pin to the other, starting and stopping exactly at the pin mark, backstitching at both ends. And be careful here as precision is very crucial as this is what's going to determine the evenness of your pockets. Count the back stitches. One, two and three and then back to get that precision check that the lines all match up fold the seam allowances of the weld down and place the pocket back detail right sides together alongside the seam and pin right in the corner with the edge of the weld and the back pocket being even Now you can draw a straight guiding line and sew straight from one pin to the other, backstitching carefully at both ends. Start and stop exactly at the marked corners and you can tell if they're even from the wrong side. Cut out the seam allowances so they're not going to bother you and create bulk. And after we sewed the welt and the pocket back, turn your side front around to the wrong side and quickly finish the frame. Now one and a half centimeters or a half an inch from each edge of the frame, mark in the middle and then join to create one long line. Then join these dots with the corners of the frame to create guidelines for cutting just like this. This is where we're going to cut through and these outside lines are left uncut. When you cut, turn away the seam allowances of the weld and pocket back so that you are cutting only through one layer of the fabric. Cut through the drawn line, stopping just one millimeter or a sixteenth of an inch before the seam ends. Do not cut through the seam, you need to see the guidelines. And be very careful at this step. Turn the bodice to the right side and then tuck in the pocket back into our newly cut slit and flip and tuck the corners of the weld inside as well. The first thing we must do here is make sure that this princess seam is lined up with itself. Pin the welt to the pocket back and now it's time to even out the corners. 
Turn away the edge of the bodice so that you can see what's going on in the back. This here needs to lay evenly and flat. And if you can see that the corner here doesn't quite lay smoothly, that means we didn't cut far enough. So turn it back and clip right into the corner. Flip it out and it should lay better this time. Smooth everything out and we're going to pin this here. Do the same to the other side and do keep in mind that it's better not to cut quite enough than to cut too much as we can always go back and fix it but not if you've already cut too much. Once everything is laying nicely and evenly with itself, we're going to sew right along this line of the seam allowances. You can pin it for extra stability. This is a faux welt pocket. If we were going to sew a working pocket, we'd need to sew more pieces right here. Now sew right along this previously made seam. Next, turn it over and you're going to see a pretty triangle corner piece that we will evenly stitch over through all the layers. Like this, perfectly even and smooth. Now do the same to the other end. Here's what our corners look like from the back. Take out your pins and press the pocket flat. My marking pen will disappear with heat from the iron and now you have your beautiful faux weld pocket. Place the front and back right sides together and pin and sew the shoulder seam, then press. Right away you can cut all the seam allowance edges at an angle. Transfer and pin the darts at the front lining details. Again you can draw some guiding lines for yourself to ensure a beautiful dart. Sew the darts, making the first three stitches right along the edge. And then press them, first flat, and then towards the center, as always. Repeat for the other piece. Place a stay stitch 8mm or 5 16th of an inch from the edge at the front facing edge so it's less than our seam allowances and making sure that you can differentiate the notches I marked them with a marking pen and then clip the curve almost up to the stay stitch to make it easier to sew later on. Then pin the lining to the front facing right sides together first matching the bottom edge and all the markings. You'll have extra fabric at the curve, which is the ease. You can either distribute this evenly or make small pleats, just like this. Sew from the facing side, right under our stay stitch, sewing carefully to avoid any unwanted folds. Press out the lining, following the curves of the fabric, as we need the shape for the perfect fit at the bust. Then trim the seam allowances, leaving 6mm or a quarter of an inch, and in the same way, sew the other side. Take the back facing and the back lining and mark the centers on both pieces. Then transfer the marks from the paper pattern to the back lining. This top mark we will extend to 4 cm or 1.5 inches and this one at the bottom to 8 cm, 3 inches. Extend the next two marks at the bottom edge to 3 inches as well. Place pins at the points and then pin the tuck darts and sew. Now press them towards the center from the wrong and right sides. Stay stitch the bottom edge of the back facing 8mm or 5 16th of an inch from the edge and before we move on, make sure that you mark the notches so they don't blend in with your clips that we're going to make at the edge of the curved area between our marks. Doing so, you'll be able to straighten out the edge as we sew. So take your lining and pin it to the facing, orienting yourself with the centers first, then our marks, and then all around, distributing the fabric evenly. Sew and then press, and work from the facing side, smoothing everything out with your iron. Sew the shoulder seams and press them. This is it for part 1 of sewing this classy Marlin vest. Thank you so much for watching. Please watch part 2 here at the link above or in the description of this video and get our pattern that we used in the link below as well. And happy sewing!